Nailing the ability to paint a buttery smooth gradient is one of the fundamentals of sneaker customizing. You're aiming to seamlessly blend two colors together until you can no longer tell where one starts or stops. So why is it that sometimes when trying to paint a gradient, you end up with what looks like just an unfortunate bit of overspray, which can be seen on a bunch of my early pairs. What are some of those missing steps that can help your colors simply vanish into one another? Well, after many years of practicing with an airbrush daily, I'll show you how to pack even more colors into tighter areas with your blends. And it's probably much easier than you'd think. But there's also one insanely cool trick that you might not have done before that can really help distract the eye from where the colors connect. But to get to that next level, we'll need a little bit more than just a better feel for controlling your airbrush. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a three color gradient on these Air Force Ones as our base shoe. To ensure that our paint can flow seamlessly through our airbrush, we'll need to mix it with some toothing and then run it through a mesh strainer. I'll be using a Badger Patriot 105 as my weapon of choice. Then I'm going to start laying in each of my colors about a third of the way up. Try to give yourself at least 15 minutes of dry time between coats of paint. This will fly by as you spend time swapping from one color to the next. Keep in mind, these are meant to be incredibly thin like coats, so don't feel like you need to lay them on thicker for more coverage. After two coats with our airbrush, this is how things are looking. At this point, I like to lay down a quick coat of paint by hand near all of the stitching and any areas where two panels meet. These tend to be harder to hit areas with your airbrush. Also, if your project is done entirely with an airbrush, it makes it very difficult to touch up any spots with a paintbrush since the paint tends to lay a bit darker. This will help prevent that issue. Naturally, things are going to look very odd at this point, but this will ensure you don't have any white peeking through later on. Now we can hop back into our airbrush coats as we are on to layer three. Keeping just a tad of the previous paint in during color swaps not only saves time by reducing the need for a deep cleaning of the cup, but also helps the colors start to blend together even easier. Things will begin to look nice and solid right around four coats for most colors. It may still be fairly obvious where all of the colors intersect, but with our next trick, we'll be able to make this blend much smoother. So what do you think is the fastest way to remove the visibility of the seam where two colors meet? Well, surprisingly, it's adding a third color. That's where our middle bar technique is going to come in handy. Start by combining an even mixture of the two colors together in your airbrush cup. Then you'll want to cover the nozzle with a rag so that no air can escape and begin slowly pulling down on the trigger. This will mix everything inside the cup together and is known as the backflow technique. Applying this new third color we just created right around where our initial two colors meet will start to blend things together and cover up the seam. If I play that back, you'll see I'm only spraying a very small line to help bridge the gap between colors. We'll do this right where pink meets purple and repeat those same steps where purple meets blue. Now, in some instances, if you're trying to blend two very contrasting colors, you'll want to do a more expansive middle bar. This will help soften that blend between them that would otherwise still be pretty obvious. In that instance, you'd also want to use less of the darker color when creating your new middle bar color. Another great way to punch up the contrast of the gradient even more is to lighten and darken the edges. We can do this by simply increasing or decreasing the overall value of the colors near the edges. So to lighten the pink, I'll mix in some white and spray that color near the midsole and bottom edge of the gradient. Then to darken the blue, I'll add a bit of black and spray that color near the top edge of my gradient. This may not seem like a lot initially, but expanding the overall color value range in a gradient 
will greatly enhance its impact. So our gradient looks pretty solid at this point. You might even feel satisfied to call it a day here. But what if there are some spots you don't feel are perfectly blended quite yet, or if you want to add even more flavor to your design? That's where textures or airbrush stencils can really come in handy. I incorporate these into just about every one of my designs. Not only can you find one to match basically any theme you're doing, but the intrigue behind them always breathes new life into the project. However, the real magic in using these comes from how amazing they are at hiding any mistakes or imperfections you might have made while laying down your gradient. Allow me to demonstrate. For this shoe, I'll be using this brush stroke pattern stencil. Now these are super easy to use regardless of your expertise with an airbrush. I'll start things off by applying the main colors we used earlier right across the middle bar and any other regions I want that color to pop. These sheets are lightweight and flexible, so you'll want to place them directly against the shoe for best results. Hold the stencil in place with one hand and then spray about six to nine inches away with the other. Generally speaking, you don't need to apply much paint through the stencil. Some things to keep in mind is you can pull back on the airbrush trigger very lightly. You don't need to pull it all the way back. And at the same time, pull back away from your stencil and that's gonna give you that very soft fading off effect. Remember when working with Angelus paints that your darker colors are gonna tend to show up much more vividly against lighter colors rather than vice versa. So in this instance, I will not apply dark blue against my light pink at the risk of overpowering it. Now, if you're feeling spicy, grab a neutral color and apply it in any areas that feel bare or where you still need to hide the blends more. In this case, I'm using metallic silver and following that up with gold. Now it's just about impossible to find where any of our original three colors start or stop. Our middle bar technique and stencil use have completely transformed this gradient, which spans from a light pink all the way to a rich navy blue in just four inches. To balance out some of the madness we've created so far, I'll do the quarter panels and toe box in a solid color. Then I'll make the sock liner in even darker navy blue, just to continue that light to dark trend we have going on the rest of the upper. Listen, there's a solid chance you'll want to have the know-how to successfully conquer a buttery smooth ombre or gradient effect at some point in your journey. Whether you're working with the colors of a sports team, some big company, or even just freestyling your own designs, you can't go wrong with one of these. Now, if you think that you're ready to start selling some of the custom shoes that you're creating after learning a technique like this, make sure you check out this video next, where I'll give you some tips on pricing your work. All right guys, everybody get out there and just create.